How are you doing today? I'm doing well. That's Thanks good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so this shouldn't take um too long. I'm just gonna ask you um just a few questions, you know. Yeah, great. Uh, um, how, how do I sound? Should I should I come a little closer? Is this a better? Oh no, you you sound good. Okay, yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Um, so can you just um start off by telling me a little bit about your backstory? Well, I mean, I can go back as far as you'd like to memory, <laughs> but I would say that it all started at Dell in college, of course, because I had a I had a wonderful professors and a degree in photography and film. Okay. Uh, and and then. Timing being what it is, I emerged from from those the ivory tower to to a world you know awash with change as the internet came upon us and Photoshop and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I and I was able to just sort of continue with the the learning part of my brain. And I didn't do photography right away, but I was able to sort of stay on the cutting edge of technology and and current events, I guess until the dot-com boom presented itself and, and gave me an opportunity to actually quit my job or jobs and be a photographer once and for all. Of course, that was a somewhat short-lived uh, boom. But, but once having the taste of, of photography and being a photographer, I knew it was just a temporary setback before I would go do it again. And then, of course, an opportunity to work on Zack Snyder's Watchmen really, really got the trajectory uh, you know, aligned, and I've been doing that for the last ten years. Yeah, see, I, I, I just, I am just like I, I lose my words because for you to be able to say that you've worked with Zack Snyder, I just think that's like a heck of an accomplishment. And I've seen, you know, your uh, Watchmen portraits, and they're really good, of course. But you know that, <laughs> and um. So b since you brought up Zack Snyder, um, what was it like to work with him? Well, you know, I mean, it, my opportunities to work with him, it's a little bit like if the first time you ever had a glass of wine, it was Muto and Rothschild, or if the first time you ever saw a beach, it was, you know, the, the, the beaches of the Philippines or something, right? I mean, I my first time working on a movie was with Zack Snyder, and that was largely because his wife, and I have known each other since college, so I he was the he was my first introduction to what a director could be. So it, it's it's difficult, you know, when you when you only know that <laughs> to have certain expectations of what everyone will be like. Yeah, of course, of course, uh, and and of course he's a lovely, effervescent, energetic, creative force. Oh yeah, and. Uh, and that I, I just count myself super lucky that that he and I have been able to collaborate, and I've essentially been able to work for him for the last ten years. That's incredible, Clay. Incredible. Um. You know, it it totally is, and, and you know, <laughs> life is funny that way. I mean, who in a million years would have thought that a woman I met in college, uh, and whose friendship I had valued for for fifteen twenty years before they met each other? Yeah. So it's really great. <laughs> Um, so I have another question for you. Yeah. So what keeps you going in terms of, um, you know, still doing photography after all of this time? Well, I mean, gosh, I, you, you have to pinch yourself sometimes when you realize that you're a photographer. And the, and the time that I always am reminded that that's my profession and that I, I'm so lucky to call it my profession is when I'm filling out those forms to, to enter other countries and they ask you your profession. Uh, I'm, I'm just super lucky. And look, I wasn't much of a student in many of the traditional subject matters. You know, I mean, that math and, and English weren't my strong smoots. So to be able to pursue the arts and then find, find success in it is, is absolutely, you know, it's extraordinarily lucky. And I, and I keep going because it's something I continue to love and maybe even love it more as I, as I continue to be intrigued and challenged by the art form and yeah. the process. Okay. So which do you like doing more, taking the actual shots or the editing side? 
Oh my God, that's a no-brainer. I, I, if I never got to see the pictures I got to make, I'd be super happy. I didn't have to look back. <laughs> okay. it, it is really a different thing. To go out and make photographs is, is so different than coming back and sitting in front of a laptop or a computer and then dealing with them. Mm -hmm. I've always, I've always said that photography is really for me a catalyst, an excuse to engage the world in conversation. It, it oftentimes, uh, with a camera in your hand, you can go places and do things and and interact with people that you wouldn't get to if you weren't a photographer. And so I'm I'm always aware of that. I appreciate that, and that's really what guides me. That isn't to say I'm not interested in making beautiful photographs and I of course I try and uh, I do spend a fair amount of time on the back end but my passion lies in making them not editing yeah in fact I keep my editing to a minimum you know I'm, I'm an old I learned in a dark room yeah. and I keep my post-production to pretty much dark room sensibilities it's easy to, to slip into doing a little more sophisticated stuff given the tools that are at hand, but my, my general spirit is that of dark room post-processing. Yeah, I've noticed that I was um, looking at your uh, gallery early, earlier this morning, and I noticed that you don't do like a lot of heavy editing. You know? No, mm -hmm. no, I don't even like to crop as a rule. Like it, I, it, part of that is because the, I, you take enough photographs as a professional generally, and all of us can nowadays, that, that why not spend the time and find the one that really resonates and that works and that works with the least amount of effort. And on a lot of levels, that, that way you honor that moment more purely rather than, than wringing it out from something that was uh, close. I even say that if, if I'm messing around with an image too much to try and get it to something that I like, then I, I probably should just put that photo away and not it wasn't good to begin with. Yeah. Uh, and like that's and that's my process. That isn't necessarily true for everyone. So, yeah. you know, the na the nature of artistic endeavor is it's very personal. Yeah. Okay. Um another question for you is what what kind of tips would you offer to young and upcoming photographers? Well, I I guess the number one thing is to take your passion, which is presumably photography. Yes. And to to move some of that passion over into patience and perseverance. It's just the nature of the world and the marketplace that not everyone's gonna sort of roll into the world and be a professional photographer. The ones who, the ones who generally do, if they're not incredibly gifted and, and lucky, are the ones who stick it out and who are patient and continue to learn and continue to be, uh, you know, just, just hammering away at their craft. So, so take that, and that, that's not to say you, you diminish the passion you bring to it, but you have to, sh you can't just run on passion alone or you'll flame out. So that, that's my, my general advice. The other is, of course, to just fill your brain with imagery. Go study the, the greats and study the history uh, and nowadays, of course, the, the internet is awash in imagery to to inspire. Yeah. But be, be attentive, pay attention uh, to how those images are made and what they're, why they're resonating with you. Okay. Some yeah, also, yeah. I guess the third bit of advice, since I'm on a roll here, mm -hmm. is is to really try and make sure that it's your voice, not to not to mimic or to to fall into some of the seductive aesthetic cliches that that while appealing to the senses aren't true to the to you as an artist make sure that that voice is yours otherwise you're gonna you're gonna find yourself unsatisfied along the way and when the pressures of the market are, are really beating down on you if it's not true to your voice then you will be beaten out of the market yeah that's some great advice, Clay. <laughs> I, I hope so. I mean, it's always hard to give advice, of course. I mean, it's to, if, if it were that simple, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then then everyone would be following their passion. Oh yeah. Um. <laughs> so, what is your favorite thing to shoot? 
Well, I, I, at, at risk of, of indulging a superlative, I'm not good with favorites or best or anything, but I, I do enjoy people as my subject matter. And when it's a landscape, I kind of enjoy hinting at, at the way people have affected that landscape. Uh, it's a little hard to say, but, but uh, in general, portraiture and versions of portraiture are my favorite. Okay. Uh, also, because they're because you know, the humans are so so fleeting in their expression and in their gestures, and and to be able to to have a kind of artistic conversation between you and them is a treat, and and for the camera to record a little fraction of a second of it, and and for it to resonate and linger and and uh, let people interpret those images is is pretty special. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, okay. So, what was your first camera? <laughs> I had a Canon AE-1 program in 1986. Okay. I just yeah, bought one recently. Not, you know, cameras, yeah. cameras, gear, all the rest of it is completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. We we all are walking around with, with cameras far superior to what anyone in the history of photography essentially had access to uh, and and they're in our pockets so so it isn't about the gear it's it's about the intention of the photographer and your your attentiveness and engagement with the world yeah okay and what is your favorite city to shoot in <laughs> i don't know i guess the city i'm in New York, like, okay. No, any city, wherever I'm. I'm leaving Los Angeles tomorrow, so I'm in Los, Los Angeles. Look, <laughs> I don't, I don't have a that kind of. I I enjoy working, I enjoy finding photographs, anywhere they might, you know, catch my eye. So I I'm um, I'm not location dependent. In fact, I'm I'm just a sucker for a plane ticket. You you send me somewhere, I'll do my best to make a, a strong photograph. Oh yeah. Okay. And you know I have to ask, what is your favorite Zack Snyder movie? Oh, you're killing me with these favorites. <laughs> I don't I honestly don't have one. In part in part because with with all of the films that I've been part of with Zack, I'm it's impossible to detach myself from the day to day memories of its creation. You know, I'm I'm it, it would be like th these are huge chunks of my life spent on these sets and to privilege one over another is to diminish any given part of my life. I, I, um, I really couldn't tell you, I, I guess maybe my favorite has yet to be, has yet to happen. I'm, I'm looking forward to a long <laughs> shared, shared career with Zach. Okay. I can understand that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can understand too that it, it, if you, it's all one, well and good to go sit in the movie theater for a few hours and feel like that that movie's changed your life. But if you spend six months <laughs> on oh, set yeah. every day with the movie, you're not gonna, you're suddenly not gonna be able to distinguish one from another. Oh yeah. Um, are you able to see my phone case? <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, like, as you. Oh yeah, Batman and yeah. Watchmen. Oh yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So as you can see, Batman is my favorite superhero. So if you had to pick one, who would you choose? Oof, um, I, I'm fond of Wonder Woman. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think for a lot of reasons. One is that she she just seems most suited for her and comfortable with her power, and yeah. and I I like that. I you know. Superman struggles. Batman's conflicted, right? Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman is is more confident, mm -hmm. and and I like that. I like that she and she's yeah, she's so wonderful. She's unstoppable on so many levels. So I I, I dig Wonder Woman, and and I and it, of course it's hard to separate from from my three movies made with Gal and how she's representing the character and the rest oh, of yeah. it. And I'm not. I don't come from a huge 
comic book background. I didn't, I wasn't much of a reader as I alluded to earlier in terms of my academic credentials. I didn't like reading anything, let alone comics. Yeah. So I, I, my first comic book ever that I read was Watchmen and I was on the way to go to work on the set. Oh, wow. Yeah. Huh. So, and it, you know, and there, of course, the, the characters of Watchmen aren't really superheroes, but those folks, Rorschach is hard to beat. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun to see Rorschach and Wonder Woman. How's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, man. Um, okay. Uh, another question for you. Um, do you or anyone that you know, like, offer any internships in, like, your industry in particular? You know, generally no, because the nature of my work is either, you know, super confidential, but also movie set photography is the domain of unions. And the IATSE rules would keep anyone who's not in the union from working or being part of it. That's not to say there aren't PAs and, and uh, interns on movie sets, but that wouldn't come through my, at my level. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is too bad because I get that question a lot. And of course, it would be interesting to try and, you know, figure out a role for somebody, but it would probably be so unglamorous of just like digging <laughs> through my disorganized hard drives <laughs> that, that they wouldn't really learn from that. Yeah. As thrilling as that might be to some, it would be drudgery of the, of the highest order. Yeah. Okay. And I just don't feel comfortable bringing somebody with all that enthusiasm <laughs> under my wing to sit them in front of a laptop to try and untangle my disaster of drives. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have another question for you. So I've been on Vero for a while now, and I really enjoyed the app. And I was trying to figure out how do, how do I become, you know, like an ambassador for Vero? Well, I don't know. The The ambassadorship was offered after uh, years of using the app and my friendship with Eamon Hariri, who, who, whose brainchild is Vero. So I don't know what the, what the bar is to be an ambassador. Okay. Um, I think there's going to be an improved FAQ, you know, frequently asked questions page, uh, due in large part to this crush of questions that are probably coming their way in recent days. Uh, so I can't, I don't know that. A similar question I get a lot is about verification, being a verified user. The, the, the person in charge of that is slightly swamped with more pressing uh, you know, development work than that right now. And again, we'll probably be part of that upcoming fact. Yeah. Yeah, I hope, I don't, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I feel super grateful that I was asked. And yeah. I'm hoping, you know, I'm, it doesn't come with an instruction manual per se, so I'm just doing what comes naturally. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm so glad that you've been part of the app for a long time. I mean, I think it's, uh, yeah. it's high time that more people start using it. And I think with more people mm -hmm. will come a greater understanding of, of its utility and value. Oh, yeah. I love the fact that it doesn't, like, compress any images, you know? That's really huge yeah. for me, you know? Yeah, my favorite feature is the search function, so that if, you, if you're following or connected with a number of people, you can literally go to the places in your collections and click on the little compass bar and see places nearby you that have been recommended or otherwise mentioned by your contacts and connections. Yeah. That, that, to me, is so wonderfully natural. Like, a, if I were to come visit you, I'd call you up and ask you where the good restaurants were. And, and this app now mimics so many of the kind of human qualities that we associate with friendship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. To say nothing of the best looking images of any social app, of anything, really. I mean, I feel like it's better than Flickr was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and keep in mind, like, Vero's at version one. This, right. This thing, they're just getting started. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people complain about it, you know, crashing and stuff. But I'm in, I, I've been trying to tell people to just, you know, give it time, you know. The, you know. The, 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 no one could have anticipated this crush. I mean, there were something like a half a million users that were 
that slowly joined over the last two and a half years. And then in five days, two million people came on board. Nobody, no dev, no server backend could have handled that crush. And it came without any kind of marketing message or, or anything. It just happened with some sort of grassroots tipping point. Oh, yeah. So I sympathize. And, and right now the app is really flowing. So kudos to them in the short term that, the, that they uh, rallied to address the issues. And uh, right now the app's running beautifully. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of another question that I was meaning to ask you. Um, so do you remember um, Keith? I know he's in charge of the Instagram account called The Nice Cast. Of course I know him. There we go. Okay. So he... He has been, um, you know, wondering, you know, if there is an official like Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Do you know I, if there is I, one? <laughs> he, he's um, is he the only guy wondering that? Because I haven't really. Oh, heard. oh no, he's no, he's not the only one. I just, I, I just talk to him a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah. What is that? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Um. Oh, sorry. Uh, that should be. You should make some sort of hashtag. Oh my gosh, man! I've been seeing a lot of people use that hashtag. Actually, something oh, like. Uh, See, my <laughs> ideas are nothing new in my ideas. <laughs> nothing new under the sun, right? <laughs> <laughs> Only interpretations. Right. Um. Yeah, I can't think of anything else to ask you. You've given me some really, you know. Um, important, you know, tips and things um, that I'm going to, you know, carry with me as I do uh, my photography business. And, um, man, I, I I can't, you know, express enough how grateful I am for you to, you know, uh, make time to, you know, chat with me, you know. Um, well, look, I, just, I appreciate it, and I'm glad you took the initiative. The timing was right, and I... Uh, I'm always in awe of, of folks like yourself who who have the kind of commitment to not just take their passions and develop and grow themselves, but to, to then extend it out and share it through podcasts and the like. So I, I'm, uh, you know, hats off to you. And I'm so glad that we had this time to talk. Oh, yes, sir. I will definitely keep in touch. All right, awesome, especially on Barrow. Yes, that's sir. Pretty much all, that's pretty much my only spot. I, I, you know, I get into little arguments over there on Twitter, just de- <laughs> defend defend uh, various positions. But but for the most part, my sincere and real self is over on Barrow, and I hope others will join us there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Take it. Um, right, yeah. Well, have a great day. Thank Happy you. Saturday. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Take it all right, easy. Bye bye. All right. Mm-hmm.